So, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, as stated, uh, my name is Jim Walter. I work with um, uh, within McAfee Labs, and uh, I'm the manager of the Threat Intelligence Service. And basically, uh, what that really means is um, I uh, run a, a team of folks around the globe, and we're responsible for just uh, essentially monitoring and listening to all the. Uh, threat-related information and chatter that is constantly going on, and then sifting through all that information and making determinations about um, really what we need to do uh, within McAfee Labs in terms of um, uh, disseminating information about uh, those threats, as well as what we need to do um, with regards to uh, creating um, uh, mitigation uh, through our content streams and products and, and that sort of thing. Um, but a large amount of what we do is basically um, uh, uh, sifting through and, 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 and dissemination of, of that information and trying to distill it to kind of digestible forms. And, and when I say threats, um, uh, the, the, the primary thing that I'm referring to there would be um, you know, malware in general, um, vulnerabilities in you know, all manner of products, platforms, systems, ex uh, applications, et cetera, and exploits um, of, of those vulnerabilities, which sometimes overlaps with malware as well. So um, those are kind of the, the, the major areas uh, that, that the team focuses on. Um, and one of the primary areas that we actually, uh, you know, create content against and, and, and can take some action with. So today I'm going to really, within this time frame, uh, you know, we can, we can really only kind of scratch the surface of a lot of this stuff. I can take any of these topics and probably speak for two or three days. Um, but um, I'm going to try to, to give a, a good overview of what's, what we've sort of been observing over the last year. Um, and where you know things are kind of headed um, again w in the time frame of the next uh, few quarters uh, or year or so. Um, so we're going to talk about malware, uh, current trends around that, and I've you know you can read a few bullet items there. Um, you know there's some interesting stuff going on with mobile uh, as well as um, uh, different developments on other um, you know non-traditional targeted platforms, things like macOS and such. Um, and then uh, crimeware kits and, and exploit kits and, and all the fun stuff in those. Um, we'll also talk a little bit about um, uh, client application targeting, um, what's uh, you know sort of the most targeted and why um, and uh, and why that's relevant. Um, and then also some sort of uh, you know some emerging but some other um, you know again non-traditional uh, targeted systems, targeted applications, things that um, need more attention paid to them uh, with regards to security and also you know need th these things need a light shown on what's already been going on uh, with regards to um, uh, uh, actual incidents and exploitation and then we'll talk a little bit as well about hacktivism which has kind of been a a really big deal um, over the last year um, you know and and we'll kind of focus specifically on a few uh, groups that tend to get the most coverage um, but uh, we'll attempt to <clears throat> excuse me, uh, talk about kind of what does it all mean, um, what really matters amongst the kind of sea of what's going on, um, who's really benefiting uh, from uh, this sort of uh, wave of interest or, or trend, and then, you know, some of the, um, uh, I guess, uh, follies that have sort of uh, contributed to um, some level of, 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 of losing trust and, and, and waning interest in some of these groups. So we'll kind of dive right into it and, and talk just briefly uh, here uh, a little bit about the malware side of things. So malware in general, we're talking about um, you know, all, all families, your, 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 your static malware, like your Trojans, uh, including backdoors, password stealers, um, rogue security, rogue utility products, um, uh, but also file infectors, uh, you know, just traditional parasitic viruses and the like. And also, um, uh, you know, self-replicating worms. So, you know, malware kind of encompasses all the traditional uh, uh, segments or types. Uh, and so, this chart kind of gives you a, an idea of what's kind of been going on over the last year, just in terms of of sheer raw volume um, of unique uh, new samples. So, um, really, uh, you, the, the, the idea here is that it's just exponentially growing. Uh, leaps and bounds year over year, and has been for uh, maybe the last seven, eight years, we've seen this kind of significant uh, growth. Um, at the rate we're going, uh, probably by the end of, of 2011, 
you know, we'll have somewhere on the order of 75 to 80 um, uh, million unique uh, samples uh, in our, you know, what we call the, our collection or our, or our zoo. Um, and, uh, and so it's, it's, just, it's almost impossible to, to keep up with, and, and in a lot of ways, it's almost a silly thing to even, um, you know, discuss, because, uh, you, know, you know, by the time we leave this room, you know, the numbers are just going to be continually jumping and jumping and jumping. So um, this, this really started to explode, I would say, um, you know, in, t in terms of growing as fast as it is now, um, around 2003, 2004 onward, when we started to see sort of, you know, the rise of, of, of botnets and the whole uh, NetSky, MyDoom, Bagel um, war and activity. Um, and, and, and that kind of began the sort of shift trend-wise from, uh, you, you, from having these large-scale kind of global um, outbreak kind of situations and scenarios, your, your, your events like uh, Slammer, Nimda, Code Red, and all those kind of you know, things that happened a long time ago, but we still remember because they were, they were hugely impactful. Um, but now it's more, it, it's more about you know, staying under the radar, um, staying uh, undetected as long as possible, getting as, as many, um, uh, uh, as large as footprint as possible with your, with your malware campaigns, um, specifically within the whole uh, botnet community. And, um, and so, you know, again, 2004 onward or so, um, that's, that, that kind of exponential growth has, has really been uh, um, uh, what we've been observing. So, um, you know, again, takeaway here is uh, we're just seeing a huge amount. Uh, and, uh, you know, if I had to break it down by, by day, you know, I think we see somewhere around uh, 55,000 and process, uh, you know, about that much uh, new malware samples per day. So incoming stuff into our labs and into the stuff that we observe, um, we're, we're in that area. Um, and, uh, and so that's, that's about where we are. I think um, if we, you know, break it down even further, you know, uh, uh, we can talk about... Um, uh, sort of how 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 some of that uh, fifty five thousand breaks down, uh, but um, you know there's there's other things to look at. But you know trend wise, you know uh, again uh, talking about malware, talking about the different types and the different families, um, uh, the, the 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 type and classification that's kind of still king of them all would be your your static. Um, uh, you know, non-self-replicating, non-file infecting uh, Trojan type malware. So this includes your password stealing Trojans, your backdoors, your auto run worms. Um, uh, well, well, not the auto run worms, but the separate uh, Trojans that have auto run capability, um, as well as your rogue security and rogue utility products. Um, so those are still uh, uh, far on top and far out number in terms of volume that we see day in, day out. Um, they far outnumber the other the other types, the other families. So your your file infectors and your and your and your worms. Um, you know we we uh, see around 2.5 million new unique samples per month. Um, of that, uh, probably around uh, 60,000. I think it's a little bit more these days. Um, of uh, new unique. Uh, uh, Samples of, of, of rootkit-like or stealth-type malware. So, you know, again, with the with the idea being, you know, stay undetected as long as possible, um, and 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 keep your infection running undetected as long as possible. Um, the stealth components become more and more important uh, in that equation. Um, and then we talk about uh, you know, within uh, some specific families, you know, PWS and Autorun, we've got the numbers there. Um, and gl the global botnet activity, um, you know, it's, it's, there, there have been several, uh, you know, takedowns of some of the larger ones uh, recently, uh, you know, in the last year. Uh, but, you know, it's continuing to come back. So we're seeing more uh, and more um, bounce back in, in, in that, uh, 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 in building of new networks, I should say. Um, you know, just like you know, when when um, you know large spam organizations are taken down, it takes a little time, but they eventually do bounce back. Um, with regards to mobile, this has kind of been uh, an interesting area, and you know, we've been talking. Um, I know within within McAfee, and I'm sure within plenty of other security vendors as well. You know, we're talking been talking mobile, mobile, mobile for, since 
uh, you know, the Palm Days, you know, and uh, it's it's been kind of a, a a discussion that's been on the shelf, but but not a whole lot of uh, meat to it, uh, in, until um, maybe the last few years. And what we're seeing now is is you know, obviously um, with the proliferation and usage of your iOS devices and your Android devices, this is becoming a huge uh, market or target uh, for malware. And in fact, um, Android has very quickly risen to the, you know, to the top of the stew, so to speak, um, uh, of, of, of all the uh, platforms um, for uh, you know, uh, established malware that is out there that we uh, observe. Um, it's, 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 it's huge, it's constantly um, uh, growing, um, and, and, and has, again, quickly bypassed other more seasoned uh, platforms, your, your Symbians and, and, and other platforms that have uh, had more um, you know, notable malware threats in the past, but Android is above and beyond uh, all those. Um, you know, your iOS kind of fits in there, but uh, most of the issues with that are more um, you know, academic. There are some um, you know, it, there are um, actual examples of you know malware and some some rogue apps that are malicious, uh, but uh, in in terms of actual in the wild stuff and things that are more easily contractable, um, Android would 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 definitely be the king there. Um, and you know we have a few examples down at the bottom, but um, you know uh, one of the interesting things about the Android side of the world is you know they don't have quite the same. Uh, vetting process as some other app stores like you know Apple, um, and and so it's very uh, common to see uh, malicious applications posted on you know the the uh, official Android app uh, market, uh, as well as um, trojanized versions of other popular applications. So we do see that, see that quite a bit. Um, now there have been some some kind of recent uh, issues with the Apple Store and some um, uh, kind of. Uh, uh, developments with uh, regards to uh, a couple particular apps that ended up being malicious and weren't uh, uh, were maybe not vetted as much as they should have been, but um, the issue is far more of, uh, prevalent in, in the Android world. So again, um, with regards to iOS and Android, uh, Android is still uh, heads and tails above above everything else. Um, and another thing that has been interesting, especially over the last year, is is kind of a, you know, the the, the rogue security, rogue utility, um, you know, small sort of extortion type malware uh, has been around for for years and years and years, and it's it's been a long time problem for uh, you know Windows users. These these applications that come up and say you're infected with X Y Z. Um, uh, if you want to clean it, uh, you know, go to this site or pay X amount of dollars for the full version of this application, then we'll clean you up. When in fact, there's actually nothing there to clean. Every, all the claims are, are, are untrue, and uh, it's uh, basically an attempt to uh, extort money. And when you're infected with these things, you can't actually get, you normally, uh, uh, very often can't actually get to legitimate security sites, and um, so you're, you're kind of bound by, by what, uh, what they're saying. But at any rate, we, you know, in the McAfee world, we, we call those fake alert Trojans. Uh, they go by many, many, many other names. But uh, we've started to see a lot of those um, in the Mac OS world uh, just this year. So, um, you know, malware on the Mac is not an interesting thing, but these particular types of Trojans would be. Um, you know, there, there always has been malware on the Mac, um, despite... Uh, a lot of claims, but uh, it's always been there. Uh, but but these new um, uh, examples of the fake alerts uh, are are quite interesting to follow. Um, and uh, uh, you, we also see a lot of um, the more prevalent, um, just general kind of Trojan families out there. Your DNS changers and um, some uh, uh, other um, uh, types that that are very prevalent in the Windows world, also being uh, kind of ported and used in the Mac universe. Again, it's it's just a situation where um, you know as the um, uh, as the platform becomes more attractive and more accessible to the um, you know quote unquote bad guys, um, you know they're going to do what they can to uh, uh, make their mark on it. So, and, and another thing about these is is uh, before I move on is you know these 
and on the Windows side as well, aren't just uh, limited to um, you know, rogue security applications. We see a lot of examples of these now where they're kind of uh, branching into the system utility um, universe. So rather than being a, uh, a fake antivirus program, um, you know, it'll come up and say you need to defrag your hard drive or make some sort of claim about registry errors and that sort of thing. And it's the same deal. Um, uh, same type of uh, scam, if you will, and we see, again, similar things uh, in the Mac uh, uh, world also. Um, so that's um, you know, more or less some of the most more interesting stuff that's going on um, in the just basic malware universe. Um, now, uh, another thing that, that uh, is, is definitely of interest here is the use of, um, uh, well, to back up a little bit, you know, we kind of see um, and, and have been seeing this, this sort of two-sided world to malware for, for a while now, where you have uh, kind of one side where there's just a, a huge mass-produced malware universe. And it's, it's really sort of a, an industry these days. You know, we kind of refer, I kind of refer to it as the malware industry as opposed to the security, you know, AV industry, that sort of thing. But it really is an industry. It really is all about money now. Um, but at any rate, we have, you know, one side of the, of the universe where there's um, just huge mass production of, 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 of malware um, uh, being used for all manner of purposes. Um, you know, you, you have situations where um, a one specific malware campaign may uh, produce or distribute um, individual binaries for every client that connects to uh, the associated rogue server. Um, you have uh, just gigantic uh, spam-based seedings of, uh, you know, thousands upon thousands of variants of the same, uh, you know, Trojan uh, within that one campaign. You just have you know anything they can do to uh, just just make a huge kind of uh, um, distribute as, as many variations uh, that all um, in some way avoid uh, detection. Um, uh, they will do that, and uh, and so there's these things are generated uh, typically um, by sort of um, uh, you know these kits. Um, uh, and that's, that's one method that, that is actually used. So um, we see, um, just to kind of name a few here, and, and we'll get into the other, other side of the, uh, of, of the malware. I mentioned two sides, the mass-produced side and then, then another. Um, but uh, you know, with, with regard to these kits, um, uh, you, know, you can, um, you know, if you're willing to pay, um, you can purchase something like Black Hole or an official Zeus or Spy Eye build, and what you're actually buying is um, the ability to mass produce malware, and you're also, in some cases, purchasing uh, the services behind it, um, ongoing um, uh, anti-detection type updates and services. Um, you're purchasing, um, uh, you know, uh, uh, sort of a, a, a um, established um, uh, a load of hosts on which to seed that malware or use that uh, or use those hosts as sort of a, a relays for spamming the malware. Um, you're paying for a very fancy and slick interface to mass produce your own copies of the Trojans. And so these, these are very interesting and very sophisticated methods of, of uh, producing um, you know, malware. The admin interface is typically um, you can you can completely custom tailor the stuff. Uh, there are um, built-in mechanisms to ensure that um, the builds of your malware uh, currently avoid you know whatever AV uh, detections are available. So you know we're all aware of sites like VirusTotal and a few others uh, where we can go to sort of submit a piece of malware and see if it's detected and if so by who and by and as what. And uh, you know these guys are using those as well, but there's also tons and tons of sort of underground um, uh, uh, similar sites, and there's also you know they've got programmatic methods to do the same thing. So you know when you build stuff with these kits, you end up with um, you know a, a, a very um, uh, you know, you know, each time you build um, you know one of your your campaigns or one of your run of Trojans, um, you you are pretty much assured um, of you know how many hits you're going to get or how many um, uh, um, you know targets you're going to hit. Um, you're assured that at that time um, you know there's you know no detection is going to take place, 
And then from that point, um, you can continue uh, to be persistent um, on hosts that have actually become infected because through that same management interface for these kits, you can track um, you know, who's actually infected um, and then from there basically do whatever you want in terms of command and control, um, in terms of distributing uh, other pieces of malware and the like. So there's, there's a lot of very, um, uh, you know, there's a lot of sophistication behind these. Um, they are, um, you know, the more prevalent and well-known ones. If you actually purchase them, um, they're actually quite expensive. You know, we're talking, you know, tens and twenties uh, and a thousand dollars and up for, um, you know, official uh, Zeus or Spy Eye builds, um, Black Hole as well. But um, also, with with some of these, they've ha actually kind of you know leaked, so to speak, on uh, various you know forums and whatnot. And so you know with um, you know Spy Eye and Zeus, for example, which again are two of the larger, uh, more well-known, well-established um, kits. Um, you know you have uh, people that um, you know can can go and download the full builder and full suite of software and start to you know kind of. Uh, roll their own malware and manage it without having to pay the pesky 10, 20, 30, however much thousands of dollars that, that it would normally cost for the full service and full suite. So there are, um, you know, there, there, there are folks out there that, uh, or there are methods out there, I should say, uh, to, uh, for just about anyone to utilize some of these things. Some of them are a little more um, difficult to, um, uh, to, 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 to utilize. You know, Black Hole, for example, um, has some uh, pretty sophisticated uh, encryption and licensing um, functionality. And so while there are builds of uh, Black Hole out there available to download, it it's, uh, takes uh, quite a bit of effort to actually get it to uh, run co correctly. But, uh, you know, again, Zeus, SpyEye, um, Eleanor, and uh, a few of these others, um, you know, can, can be pulled down and run by just about anyone. Um, now, as new versions come out, um, you know, of course, those who actually pay for those new versions um, obviously get the uh, latest and greatest and, and all the features and, uh, and, and are able to do a little more with them. But uh, again, there's always going to be kind of these, um, uh, um, you know, sort of uh, 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 more accessible versions that people will continue to use. So, um, you know, just some notable things with these in 2011, uh, we saw um, some 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 releases around these. You know, Black Hole, I think, is up to version officially up to version 1.2. Although there are some higher uh, versions uh, that we've seen around, uh, but those appear to be kind of custom builds or patched builds um, for for specific purposes. Um, you know, Wheeland Utani um, has uh, the ability to actually create uh, mass create uh, Trojans for the Mac OS, which was kind of interesting. Um, and then we also have some other updates for. For others, again, you know, Zeus and Spy Eye are almost constantly updated. Um, Bleeding Life, uh, which is a pretty uh, sophisticated kit, um, you know, Bleeding Life 2 is currently um, available for for anybody uh, to download and run and and, and utilize. Um, Three currently is 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 not, but uh, you know, for free, I should say, but it's out there for a fee and and uh, uh, available. Um, so outside of, of, of the kit world, although this kind of overlaps with it, um, is uh, talking about the um, you know, targeting uh, of specific client applications uh, uh, around exploits uh, or, or malware-based ba exploitation. Um, you know, for, for uh, many, many years now, you know, the, the trend is, uh, of, of moving away from uh, you know, targeting, you know, OS weaknesses or, or OS-based vulnerabilities, um, you know, we've seen that as the OS has become more and more hardened, more and more secure, um, more and more features within the operating systems to um, inhibit the ability uh, of malware to actually infect and run. Um, you know, the obvious next best thing is to target um, applications, your, your Microsoft Office applications, your, your Apple, you know, QuickTimes, your, your various Adobe applications, other things that are commonly seen on, um, you know, a majority of machines out there uh, that could easily uh, uh, be used uh, to, um, you know, get into uh, a host through uh, various forms of expo exploitation, uh, but also the um, you know, the, the more popular these applications are, the more information there is about, um, you know, the, the weaknesses or flaws in them. 
And so Adobe has, has really quickly um, uh, kind of risen to the top with regards to uh, targeting um, and, and you know, actual observed um, malware-based exploitation, but also um, uh, you know, independent research uncovering vulnerabilities um, and releasing um, exploits uh, and, and the like. So uh, you know, we see way more Adobe-based um, uh, exploitation. This could be Reader, Flash, Shockwave, et cetera. Uh, than we do anything else really. And that doesn't necessarily mean that um, the Adobe apps are any uh, less secure uh, than you know, maybe you know, some of the Microsoft apps, but that does mean that um, uh, the, the, uh, they're so common in so many <coughs> excuse me, environments and often um, you know, overlooked in terms of um, keeping them up to date and keeping them patched. Yeah, um, you know, a lot of environments will have a very established um, uh, and, and very well um, laid out sort of patch cycle for, you know, your Microsoft Patch Tuesday stuff, um, but maybe not so great for um, all the Adobe critical releases that come out, which now is pretty much every month as well. Um, same thing with Apple, same thing with uh, Real Player, same thing with, you know, MySQL. There's uh, tons and tons of other uh, apps that um, you, you'll see new disclosures of vulnerabilities um, and oftentimes exploits for those vulnerabilities every day. And so it's uh, pretty much a, a very large palette uh, for anyone that wants to uh, target them to, to paint on. So um, again, I think uh, right now we see <clears throat> with regards to Adobe, and, and again, this could include all manner of of their applications, but mostly like Reader and, and, and Flash. Um, you know, around 16,000 exploits, um, unique uh, exploits per month. Um, and that could be, you know, malware-based exploits, samples of malware that, that attempt to exploit those vulnerabilities, or, um, uh, but that also includes like proof of concept stuff that comes out that's, you know, maybe not malware yet, but at some point will, will be. Um, uh, <coughs> around, oh, since the beginning of 2011, uh, we've seen 60, um, uh, uh, individual uh, Adobe vulnerabilities targeted by different types of, you know, uh, of exploitation. So, you know, malware, um, again, proof of concepts, et cetera. So, you know, I, I forget the number. I think there's somewhere around uh, so far with all the Adobe, official Adobe releases, um, somewhere in the 230, 240 uh, area of actual vulnerabilities, you know, that have been, you know, assigned CVEs and, and covered in patches and bulletins. Uh, you know, of, so of those, we've seen about 60 of them actually get uh, you know, targeted. And uh, again, this sort of overlaps with the whole crimeware kit and, and malware-based exploitation thing. <coughs> Excuse me. Because we see um, as these um, uh, applications, uh, specifically Adobe and Microsoft stuff, gain uh, popularity, um, we see those same vulnerabilities uh, uh, or exploitation thereof included in a lot of these uh, crimeware kits. So again, with uh, you know Black Hole, for example, um, if you have the full paid for suite, you know you can go in and pick and choose uh, which specific vulnerabilities you want to actually uh, try to target with your Trojan, and uh, they keep it fairly up to date with regards to um, notable uh, Adobe vulnerabilities and notable Microsoft stuff as well. So, so these things play a big role in you know, some of the mass production of the malware and the targeting that the malware is attempting to do. So you know, again, Adobe far outnumbering um, Microsoft and just about everything else for uh, client side application targeting. And that's been the way I think for uh, you know, this year and last year as well. Um, now, Again, with regards to targeting of stuff, there's a lot of other interesting areas that, uh, that, that people are starting to think about and pay attention to. Um, and uh, that's sort of the whole area of um, industrial control systems, um, you know, SCADA, um, and, 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 but there, there are many others. But um, uh, you know, the, with regards to this, you know, right now there's a lot of um, visibility and uh, a lot of attention being paid to this area. Which, which is a good thing. Um, there's a huge, um, you know, very and constantly growing sort of uh, community around research on these. And I've highlighted a few of the more active ones here on this slide. Um, 
but uh, you know, the last five years has brought a lot of visibility, but the, the, the thing to kind of drive home about the whole SCADA ICS thing is, um, you know, if, 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 we, if, if we are to say that this is kind of an emerging um, you know, uh, uh, target or an emerging area for malware or for threats, that would be inaccurate. Um, this has been something that's been going on uh, for quite a few years now, um, which is kind of a, you know, a wake-up call when some people hear that. But um, you know, I did a panel in 2008 at an uh, oil and gas conference in Houston, Texas. And the talk, that whole panel was you know, SCADA, 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 and various threats and vulnerabilities that had been disclosed over the last four years. And that was in 2008. Um, and so, you know, th this is not an emerging thing. This is a, a current and actively targeted thing and has been for some time. And, uh, and, and really, it's, it, it's the, the, the genesis of the whole situation is, you know, over time, uh, you know, the, out of necessity and out of convenience, uh, you know, these, these systems have been, you know, connected uh, to the Internet and have become uh, accessible by people other than those that should be actually running them. So, um, you know, as a result of that uh, ongoing connectivity, um, these things have become very easy targets. Um, and again, uh, you know, you, you, you often have times where these are um, uh, kind of static systems um, that can be um, you know, easily um, exploited with you know, just little knowledge of how the, the installed uh, software works on those systems. If they are actually running on Windows, which, which some do, um, you know, oftentimes they are sort of bound to that version or that build, uh, and they can't be upgraded or else that homegrown software or the um, uh, 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 control software that's running on it will, will have issues. So you have a lot of situations where you know, people may not be able to upgrade, um, and therefore you have a lot of um, easy exploitation through old flaws on these systems. But the, uh, uh, the main idea here is you know, there's, there's, there's been a lot of visibility given to this area, which is a good thing, uh, but it is by no means an emerging uh, issue. Uh, it, it is very, um, uh, uh, it, it's actually a lot more established than, than, uh, than we like to think. Now, uh, you know, obviously in 2010, we had uh, Stuxnet, which, you know, created quite a bit of stir, and that was definitely an interesting event. Again, um, this, this is the other side. You know, I talk about the mass-produced malware side of the universe. Um, this is the other side, where you have the extremely um, sophisticated, extremely targeted, extremely well-funded um, uh, type of, of, of malware-based attack that you know, no one uh, may ever see um, except for those targets. Um, and unless you're paying attention to you know, all the related events and, and traffic and chatter and dots that need to be connected, you may never actually know that that was a, 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 an attack. Um, so you know, Stuxnet, which was targeting very specific uh, Siemens uh, control systems, uh, is, is a perfect example of that. The, the level of sophistication uh, behind that is, you know, at that time, you know, unprecedented. Um, the amount of time, research, and money that went into developing that stuff was, was huge. And so that's uh, definitely um, an interesting uh, way to target these systems, but it's, you know, not the only way. And there have been more since, but, skate, or, but Stuxnet was, was definitely an interesting event in this area. And it just speaks to, you know, the, 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 the other side of the trend. Like I said, highly targeted, highly sophisticated, very well-funded malware attacks that are, you know, extremely uh, targeted. And um, uh, I, I don't use the, I don't, I don't like the term APT or, or advanced persistent threat, but um, there are, uh, some some words in that acronym that that kind of makes sense, you know, in terms of advance and and and, and persistence. But the 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 uh, the ability for these things to stay um, uh, as under the radar as they did for as long as they did, because again, with the persistent side, you're talking about situations, Stuxnet included, where this this stuff was probably on the system uh, uh, for a, a very extended amount of time. Um, and it probably took years to develop. Um, you know, another interesting um, you know, event that may or may not be related to the whole Stuxnet thing is the, the recent Dooku um, uh, uh, attack, if you will. 
um, you know, shares a lot of similarities to Stuxnet, didn't necessarily target any ICS systems, but uh, again, it's a situation where, you know, of the uh, five or ten or so known targets, um, it, it was highly sophisticated and it was actually present, or, or the components thereof, um, in, in a lot of cases, actually present on those machines uh, for, for several months, uh, if not longer. And you have to really be able to kind of connect all the dots to those events to really even know what's going on. If you just took, um, you know, like the keylogger component out of, out of Dooku and, and looked at it out of context, it would be completely unremarkable. But it's only when you start to piece together all the, other, all the other components and all the other aspects of the attack that you start to realize that there's something a little more sophisticated going on there. So that's, that's definitely the other side of the trend here is the, 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 the highly uh, targeted, very well-funded um, uh, side of it. Um, um, you know, it's at this point where you start to kind of get into, you know, what are, um, you know, what's, what's the kind of government uh, tie-in to the development of some of these things and other sort of, um, you know, almost political uh, issues that go along with these attacks. Uh, but that's basically uh, where we're at with that side. So um, SCADA, very interesting, uh, but not necessarily a new thing, but there's a lot of interesting um, uh, attacks and a lot of in a lot of ways this ties into, you know, um, you know that side of the trending of, of sophisticated malware. Okay, no problem. So we'll kind of, you know, skip through all this and kind of get to the, the hacktivism stuff. But, but basically the takeaway here is there's, you know, you know in addition to, um, you know, some of the ICS stuff, there's a lot of other things being, being targeted as well. There's been a lot of talk lately and, and a lot of um, interesting uh, demonstrations along, um, you know, uh, 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 population control systems, you know, prison fencing and door controls, um, uh, energy and utility control and monitoring, financial and trading systems. It goes on and on and on. So there's, you know, the, the, the people aren't just interested in, you know, your, your, your Windows machines or your, your, your client apps. It's uh, getting a lot more uh, sophisticated when you get into this area. And then there's the medical side, of course, too, which, which I kind of highlight individually because there's a lot of really interesting stuff going on here. Um, again, um, the, the, the issue here is you have, you know, remotely manageable implanted devices in people. You have things like pacemakers that can be um, uh, adjusted um, through um, uh, uh, various forms of wireless control, implantable defibrillator, defibrillators, um, uh, and, and all sorts of other things, include, up to and including software flaws that can cause um, uh, all sorts of issues on the medical side, all of which we've seen examples of from a uh, you know, proof of concept exploitation and, and uh, some examples of actual live malware going after specific medical systems and software. And this is, there's an open database uh, that uh, anyone can see. This is the mod database. Um, I've got the actual you know, manufacturer and user facility device uh, experience. Uh, but this is a, a FDA-based database where it tracks issues with medical-related software or hardware. These are five software flaws in 2011 that led to patient death. So, you know, to kind of drive home the seriousness of, of the medical threat and what we've seen on the malicious side targeting some of these applications, it can have some pretty serious ramifications. Um, so to wrap all that up, you know, this is just a big giant ugly pie chart with all the different, uh, um, you know, uh, uh, SCADA vendors that we've been tracking over the last uh, year um, uh, and uh, kind of their percentage of the vulnerabilities and flaws that we see. Um, Iconix, the biggest one there, um, is, uh, is, is uh, probably the most targeted right now. And the funny thing about that is uh, um, most of that uh, uh, comes from proof of concepts from one of those individual independent researchers. So again, a very active community there. So um, we'll go ahead and jump into the hacktivism side and, and kind of go through, go through this. Um, but you know, we've all heard about uh, the various goings on with groups like uh, Anonymous and Antisec and Lulsec and, and, and all sorts of others, Team Poison. You know, uh, these are some of the, the more notable ones. But um, you know, basically, um, the, 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 the concept of hacktivism is, is definitely nothing new. You know, hacking for a cause and, and uh, you know, uh, hackers uh, doing what they do because they believe in certain things is, is by no means, you know, new or original. But what is very interesting about these groups is their, 
really their, their kind of marketing ability and their ability to really put a brand out there, put a face on themselves as a group and attract um, uh, followers, if you will. You know, they've, they've anonymous in particular has you know almost made it you know there's there's a lot of uh, you know cool wow factor uh, in in some of the things they do in the videos they post in the flyers they create uh, wearing the masks all that stuff there's a you know real uh, they've built a brand and if if focused in the right direction um, they have a very loud powerful voice. Uh, with a, a mass of people uh, that uh, could potentially follow them and help them, you know, do bad. Um, they have kind of recently, among, they and, and many others, other uh, groups like them have kind of started to lose focus a bit and, and, and delve quite a bit outside of the cyber hacking world, if you will. But, um, you know, just to drive home some points here, um, you know, all these groups basically uh, have kind of a, uh, a very small uh, amount of folks that are kind of the, the, the heads or the, the leaders, the actual skilled people that are, you know, doing some of the things that you hear about with regards to um, infiltrating um, agencies or, or systems and, and uh, exposing data and uh, carrying out uh, different uh, denial service attacks, that sort of thing. But you have a, you know, most of it is kind of a body of, uh, 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 and a mass of, of sort of unskilled sort of following folks that are really just kind of, um, you know, trailing into the marketing idea and kind of doing, uh, trying to do the same thing, but in, in a less smart, less anonymous way. Um, and then we kind of have a little history of anonymous there. But, um, you know, again, um, you know, some of their goals here, uh, uh, to, to drive home here, the, the uh, you know, main thing that's interesting with these, again, is in the short amount of time that, that these groups have been able to sort of mobilize the masses and, and, and build the attention uh, to their cause that they've been able to do. Um, but again, there's a lot that they've been doing that has sort of uh, started to um, you know, cause people to just kind of question them, and there have been a lot of uh, uh, other things that have occurred that um, sort of make people curious about uh, you know how much they're really able to do. Uh, but again, the marketing prowess should not be uh, discounted. Uh, if focused correctly, it could be could be quite interesting. Um, and these are just a, kind of a, a a large list of of uh, anonymous operations that have occurred in the last uh, couple years here. Taking a little too long to click through here, but but as you see, most of these actually don't have a cyber component to them. Um, some do. You've got your Operation Sony, your um, Operation Payback. That was when the whole uh, 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 use of the uh, low orbit ion cannon really took off. Um, and you've got a few others in here that uh, that have um, uh, components where uh, they're either doing denial of service attacks or information disclosure type attacks. But um, a lot of those are more activism than they are hacktivism. Um, and of course, there's other things that have happened uh, that kind of uh, have, have caused these groups to sort of lose credibility. Um, you know, there's, there have been big promises made without any sort of delivery on, on, on neat new tools like RefRef, um, which was a denial service tool that was supposed to be released in conjunction with the launch of Occupy Wall Street on September 17th. Um, and, and there have been a variety of other things, um, uh, including forays into music and other, other strange areas here. Um, so you know, here's just an example of the latest lyricist you know, Jing from Anonymous. Team, Team Poison, Poison and Anonymous. Try to censor this, ha! Huh? We do not forgive, we do not forget. We are legion. Expect us. Believe in us. Respect us. I'll stop it here. But, but what you see there is... You know they're 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 reaching out. You've got the the motto and the mantra included there. You've got the guy wearing the mask. All that stuff. They're they're branching out the brand, so to speak, and do and 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 uh, it's kind of a, an interesting exercise. But I don't know. As 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 the music stopped, I think they they probably could have made a better song. But uh, <laughs> at any rate, um, that's you know kind of where they they're starting to 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 focus and branch out. Um, and, and that was the first, and I know now there are actually more. So there's, there's more offerings from Anonymous and other members of LulzSec in the, in the music arena. So it's, it's become quite uh, interesting. 
I mentioned RefRef. This was a really big kind of uh, credibility blow to them. And uh, so, uh, you know, with this, this was, again, a, a big tool that was supposed to be released uh, on uh, September 17th, a huge brand new um, denial of service tool that was going to revolutionize all denial of service tools. Didn't actually happen. Turned out that uh, it was all just uh, uh, fluff. Um, what you have here is an IRC ch uh, transcript. You may or may not be able to read that, but that was on September 17th when uh, one of the guys that was kind of leading the hype uh, admitted that it wasn't coming out. You've got a forum down here where uh, a lot of the members of Anonymous uh, discuss technology and such, and uh, you know it shows you that these are you know the folks in this forum are actually kind of the the unknowing masses. You know they don't even know what's actually going on. Um, they're just uh, not sure where RefRef is. Um, and another interesting thing here is, you know, a screenshot. This was posted on the Hacker News in July of, you know, uh, what RefRef was going to look like, a possible GUI. Uh, the interesting thing there is it bears a, a striking resemblance to this lazy web tools uh, page recycler from 2008. So, um, you know, RefRef never happened. That was a huge blow. There are um, uh, uh, some scripts out there and things that, that some people claim uh, was RefRef, you know, Perl-based scripts and, and Python scripts going after really old, known um, MySQL vulnerabilities, but, but uh, those aren't it. So that was a huge blow. So, uh, you know, again, the idea here that, you know, they're losing focus, you know, the, the skilled head uh, is, is uh, you know, not always present and not always part of these efforts. Um, but uh, you also have a lot of infighting between the groups. But again, you know, the point to drive home here is, um, again, use the term that keeps coming up, is you know there's 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 very little signal and a whole lot of noise um, uh, with with these groups and what they're doing. Um, this is just an example of targeting between groups and also a lot of uh, you know, there's been a lot of legal legal um, uh, action against uh, some of the higher ups in in all these groups that have, that has actually caused uh, quite a, um, a decline in their actual legitimate cyber based activity. So uh, interesting stuff to watch, but um, you know. It, there, like I said, a lot of noise, and it offers a convenient distraction to other things that are actually more of a threat that are really going on, like your Dukus, like your uh, um, uh, uh, your Lurid, your Night Dragons, um, whatever other you know interesting new targeted attacks are going on right now. Those are probably more worthy of our attention than a lot of things that are going on over here. So it does serve as a as quite a distraction, uh, but like I said. Um, you know, uh, if they ever actually mobilize and uh, are able to kind of harness the power that they have uh, brand-wise, um, more stuff might occur there. So, um, you know, with that, we'll leave it. You know, uh, if there's any questions, you know, we'll be happy to answer them afterwards, but uh, that's it.